Hi, I'm Marcelo from Prestige Watches, and I was thinking the other day about Rolex and the rather short list of sports that they associate themselves with. And I was wondering, do you ever wonder why the list isn't longer? Why Rolex doesn't associate themselves with some more mainstream sports like football or basketball or American football, baseball and many others? Well, I'll tell you. Now, as you've probably seen, Rolex associates itself with tennis, motor racing, golf, sailing, and some equestrian tournaments. They would rather place desire for their products in the hands of sports that best represent the brand and its image. Sports that are watched by those that are in their target group, which is a totally different demographic. Rolex isn't marketing to a football and other mainstream sports because Rolex doesn't need to prove the quality of their product or attract desire from a mass market because their watches are not a mass market product. And they can afford this type of selective marketing because they're owned by a non-profit foundation that has no shareholders. So there's no shareholder pleasing driving their money making ambitions. So this helps them to stay clear of trying to profit at any cost and it's for this reason that they have the strength and longevity to last a very long time but their products do generate revenue and build the brand each year and anything they don't spend on their marketing is donated to charities now their target group would tend to be a more affluent audience where product affordability is more likely less of an issue and i'm generalizing a little bit here sorry but i hope you get my drift but it is evidenced in the sports that Rolex does put their name to. Rolex likes to target people that would frequently watch or play or are involved with tennis or golf or yachting or Formula One and equestrian sports because this is the audience likely to have the disposable income for an expensive luxury watch like a Rolex. And it's this niche clientele that Rolex likes to see wearing and promoting their products and their brand. Now we all know that in reality, we know people from all walks of life and earnings and job roles, whether tradesmen or business owners or celebrities who wear Rolex. But Rolex certainly have their preferred wish list when it comes to people they envisage to be wearing their watches. Even though they're the victims of their own success and the global desire of everyone and anyone wanting to wear Rolex, it's very broad. So the reason Rolex is not showing up in football, basketball, baseball, and other more popular less niche sports is because these sports are for the massive and Rolex is more selective with their target audience. And despite the celebrity players of these mass market sports themselves being regular buyers of Rolex and often the more flamboyant and ostentatious the better, it is unlikely you'll see a football player being a brand ambassador or being sponsored by Rolex anytime soon. Rolex as a company and as a brand, they don't like scandal or controversy or any negativity coming from their brand ambassadors, preferring a cleaner, more traditional, gentlemanly, more exemplary image style. The Rolex style of marketing is through storytelling, victory and example setting. They don't simply sell a product to the masses. They use their marketing budget to have their stories told by sports people who create a good example to their target audience. They focus on telling stories of being rewarded for their outstanding achievements. And this strategy has given Rolex a huge advantage in marketing. So using this strategy, their watches have been seen on the wrists of some of the best athletes in these niche sports. Testimonials from these athletes is the best marketing that Rolex has, not only because it's incredibly powerful marketing, but because it establishes Rolex in that sport. And this has always been their marketing strategy right the way back to the inception of their company, to get testimonials from their high achieving athletes about their watches. Please do let me know if you're getting any value from this by hitting the like button. And if you're new here, please subscribe. Right from the start, they told stories about how their watch was worn on the hands of some of the highest achievers, even going as far back to the story we all know with swimmer Mercedes Gleets, who in 1927 swam across the English Channel. And both Mercedes and the watch lasted the entire 10 hours in the cold water, and the watch didn't get any water inside the casing. So from this great achievement, Rolex kept marketing their product with other great attempts. They marketed to people who climbed the tallest peaks and crossed the polar ice caps and broke the sound barrier. 
One of their best known slogans is a crown for every achievement, which created an image in the minds of their target audience that in order to earn their product, there needed to be a great achievement by an individual. Thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in this subject. Be sure to subscribe if you like this stuff because I love to share my knowledge of business and marketing and branding and psychology, all to do with watches. Tell me, what's your greatest achievement? Have you ever crossed a, a threshold in your life that you've always wanted to? Did you reward yourself with a watch? Was it a, a Rolex or was it a, a different watch? Maybe you're about to graduate from college or maybe you've just started a new job or got a promotion or about to get married or have your first child. How will you celebrate that? Will you celebrate it with a watch and what would be your choice? Whatever your achievement, please let me know in the comments. It's a privilege to make these videos for you. I hope you get some value from them. Thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one.